So the vegan pasta. So a lot of the chef, Mister. Yeah, yes. I am asking the chef. So thank you guys for being here today, Josh and Abby Herbert, who, in my opinion, are like the top creators in Pittsburgh, oh, so um, <laughs> some of the top in the country, and fortunate enough that we've become friends just through social media, and uh, happy to have them here as guest number one on the podcast. So thank you guys for being here. Happy to be here. We're yeah. so happy to be here. Well, cool. So as we get started, so we're making today, um, I asked you guys some of your favorite things, and so we're going to make chicken parm with gnocchi. Yeah. Uh, oh, is that how you say it? Gnocchi. I, I was saying, um, I said Gnoc gnocchi. gnocchi. Okay, gnocchi. I think that's close enough, right? Gnocchi. Uh, I said gnocchi. <laughs> so, like, I'm curious, when you do gnocchi, yeah. like, when you've had it, is it with potato? I think. Probably. I get the frozen bags from Trader Joe's. Okay. <laughs> well, that's fine. Whatever. So. Whatever works. Um, but today we're going to do ricotta gnocchi, oh. which I think it's like one, it's easier to make at home. And we're going to link the recipe down in the description so you guys can make it. Uh, and you can make it. And you can make it. It's very, it's literally, I think, four ingredients. Okay. Okay. Then I think I can make that. Kids love make, like helping to roll it and stuff. It's really, really fun. But before we get into that, we're going to get the sauce to start cooking. So we've got just some crushed tomatoes. Now, do you have like a specific one you always use sauce? Uh, loyal to the sauce. What's that? Are you loyal to a sauce? Uh, not really. It's really just kind of like finding like the best um, tomatoes. And like these ones here, they're really, really good. Um, so we'll do the tomatoes, a bunch of Sicilian oregano. Oh, that, that's a, that's what's Some that? olive oil. That's, olive oil. <laughs> that's a lot of olive Some. Yeah, it's good for you. And then some garlic powder. And that's it. We'll let that simmer while we kind of get... Everything rolling. Hopefully we don't start a gas fire here. I know it'll work just fine. So you guys, obviously, are you both from Pittsburgh? I'm originally from Pittsburgh. Okay. This one. I'm from Ohio. Ohio, Ohio really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, Ohio. But pretty much the burb of the burg. Yeah. Like Steubenville. Pitt Pittsburgh was our, our city. So it's Small. just like extended yeah. Pittsburgh. Like you're <laughs> yeah. still from Pittsburgh. Everything she went to was coming to Pittsburgh. Yeah. yeah. Event, so. Right. Which I think is pretty common, like if you're from that area, like Western Pennsylvania. It's just it's an extension, right? It's that tri-state area of like Ohio, West Virginia, and P Pennsylvania is all in that like right. panhandle corner where... <laughs> panhandle? <laughs> what, what, wow. what do you call that? I don't, I don't tri-state area. Tri -state I don't think I've ever heard it referred to <laughs> as a panhandle. Corner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, no, so... Cool. Um, and so I'm curious, because I don't think I've ever actually asked you guys, how did you guys meet? Through the music industry, actually. Okay. Yeah, so I um, started modeling when I was 14. Okay. And like we just said, Pittsburgh was like the city yep. um, for where I was modeling. And my uh, agent connected me with a photographer, and I was with this photographer for like two years. Okay. And he randomly was like, hey, I have this, I mean, there's this big up-and-coming artist in Pittsburgh. I'm doing videos of me on Mount Washington. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, he's looking for a girl for his music video. Yeah. And he wanted to see if you were available. And I was and like, yeah, sure. And mind you, he sent me like 10 models. And I was like, that one. Yeah, right. So and he, he picked me and it just happened to be I was available for the shoot and it was just like a really cool friendship that hit off and then we just kind of remained friends for like the next two three years no, Josh then... is lying to you I thought he was weird <laughs> <laughs> I mean do you still think he's kind of weird oh my god yeah but now <laughs> I get it now I get his humor but before I was like this this guy's a little he's a little I'm very like sarcastic and I have a very odd sense of humor and that took a while to come across right yeah no but like Josh said we we remained at the time, it was Facebook and Twitter were, like, the big social yeah, media platforms. Yeah. And I was going off to college. He was pursuing music. And my mom always stayed... My mom went to us, went on the, the video shoot with me. So she sure. met Josh from the beginning, and she loved Josh. And she'd always be like, you know, have you heard Josh's new music? I'm like, no, Mom. I'm like, ew, no, I'm not, li like, listening to that. Right. Because I was just like, you know, didn't want to do what my mom... Of course. ...wanted me to. As nobody does. Exactly. Right. There's no best, though. And then one day, she was like... You know, I was I was with my friend group, and I was like, I need to I need to reevaluate my life. I need to right. see what's going on. And Josh texted me out of that, that same week and was like, Hey, like, 
You want to I come somehow up mustered and- up the courage because, mind you, I haven't I hadn't dated in like five years. I was just strictly music, focused on music, yeah. focused on music, sure. nothing else. I I did struggle a bit anxiety yeah. wise going on dates, so I really didn't. I'd talk yep. to girls like online here and there, but that's the the length of it. So okay. it actually took a lot to muster up the courage. He was to ask like, you "Do out. you want to go out? Do you want to go out to dinner or something?" And I was like, "You know what? Sure." And then literally, I nope, think I you moved. stood me up. The oh, first I did. Time. I did stand you up. I um, had a party to go to. So <laughs> she texted me an hour before she was ready to come, and she was like, "By the way, I'm going to this party." I was like, "I totally forgot about that." And then, like the following weekend, I was like, "You know what? I, I need to meet some new people, you know, and, and do some new things." And uh, then, literally that next weekend, we hung out, and I think I moved in like two months later. First wow. date was a penguin game. Wow. Yeah. And then from there, that sealed the deal. Yeah, it was. So, and your first hockey game, I believe. Yeah, very first hockey wow. game. Wow. Yeah. So I'm curious, Josh, I'm like a little familiar with your music stuff, but like, can you dive a little bit into that? Because. Just my whole life was music and then got an opportunity out of nowhere. Okay. Oh, yeah, that, that's wow. what's crazy. We started dating November 2015, Insane. and he went on tour that following summer. Oh, so like, It was like everything led up to that. Like, I was doing Facebook covers sure. on Facebook, Instagram, building my own, you know, song catalog. Yep. And then just randomly got linked up with the Dixie Chicks somehow, some way by fate. And literally dated Abby. Went on tour. It was like this. A got lot management. <laughs> like it just like boom. So like, fast. Yeah, but it was a long. It was like a long process that just seemed fast. Everything just got to this like. And I think that's why know, we point. like why we moved so fast because we were dating for like three months and then like his life changed. He was going on a na- like national tour. So it's like make a decision. Make, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. it was just like a crazy. Not only were we starting to date, but like it was like a life changing wow. thing and that I we was, both experienced. And, sure. and wow. I was like, I'll be the groupie. <laughs> <laughs> I was working at American Eagle in the mall. Wow. Airy, and I was like, well, you know, if this is my time to be a groupie. I have nothing else wow. holding me down. Yeah, and it was 21 dates. I got to play Madison Square Garden, Burgettstown. Wow. I think it's called. Yeah. It changes its name every year. Right. But, Keystone, um, yeah, Starlight. Village, but that was like, like that. a dream of mine to play there because wow. I'm from Pittsburgh. Yeah. Um, but Madison Square Garden. Yeah. Crazy. That was crazy. Yeah. That was. That's. Just, yeah, I went from playing like a very small, like Smiling Moose uh, Club Cafe, yeah. small Pittsburgh venues, Jurgles, yeah. to just like boom, you get thrown into like an arena, and, Josh and it's is- just like. He's talked about on, you know, he's open about it on our, our social media and platforms, but he is like severe anxiety in right. performance anxiety. Stage fright is like probably your second biggest yeah. one besides flying. Yeah. Hmm. So like that was wild too. Having to <laughs> just get thrown into that world. I mean, it was just, I had to just push through and persevere because this right. was my dream and it was sure. literally like, I'm not going to let this Hold me back. Um, like you might only have one shot. So yeah, like, yeah. Right. I mean, I was this up was there just. Big, like, <laughs> right. I was up there playing through panic attacks, just like, <laughs> <laughs> forgetting the words. No, I'm I'll like, never so forget but. when he the after your first show. I'll never forget. He came back. His dad bought this RV with a tour oh, bus. Nice. Bought an RV for Josh. Like so wow. amazing. He drove him across the country, and I'll never forget. I was in the RV, and Josh came back like right after his set yeah he didn't do his he was supposed to do five songs yeah. and he only did four because he started having a panic I literally, attack like, and couldn't make it through. I couldn't do it it was like first wow. yeah he couldn't do it and then when he came back into the rv he was like i've never seen someone so white and pale and he really? just laid down and he was like he couldn't talk and i had to check his pulse oh, like, no. it was just <laughs> such a rush like i literally yeah. just like accomplished my dream i yep. fought through this like crazy thing and it was just like it was just surreal. It was yeah. like it was just experiencing all those feelings in like one sure. sitting. So like 15 minutes later, I was fine. It was <laughs> yeah, out. but yeah, just crazy experience. And then um, we came back home, worked like odd end jobs. Yeah, um, you're, you're on such a high. Yeah, and but the music like, industry is just tough. It's sure it's tough to make it. It's very uh, there's a lot of competition and yeah, it's hard to make money. In, I was so. just to say financially, we were like we couldn't. Like, right. you know. I was going to Nashville, things were paid for, but like we had a townhome back here and like it just wasn't con- you know, conducive for our life. So right. I drove Uber, I worked at a juice shop, really? I worked wow. in the kitchen. Wow. Um, just all kinds of I things. You did a car dealership. <laughs> I did car sales for Were you selling cars? Well, for like I got I got, I got like right to the point where I got like uh, certified to sell the cars and I was like, this just isn't for me. So wow. after like two months of training. <laughs> but you were still hustling music and then Yeah, and then we then obviously two thousand twenty hit. Yeah. Uh, we all know from that and we were both jobless, but then yeah. TikTok. TikTok. So is that when you first started on social media? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, yeah. you had an Instagram. But... I had an Instagram for modeling, and I had like eight thousand followers, which is like a lot of followers. 
um, from just being a local model. Yeah. And Josh always would push me to be like an influencer. Josh was always, always about social media, and okay. I didn't get it. I yeah. was like, no, I would never watch YouTube. I never. Yeah. But he he had that background with you know with his music, yep. and I was like, there's no way I'll ever get ten thousand followers. Like, who cares? Like, who wants to watch me? No, I said from the beginning, I was like, you should have like someone like you, like two million followers. Yeah. Like, I don't. <laughs> Yeah, you did, and we tried, and then nothing came of it. I was modeling. I was making the money, kind of, like, supporting us while Josh was really pursuing music. And I think that was my cold press juice Your time. cold press. I was just hustling cold press <laughs> yeah. juices, making them. And yeah. then I'm coming scratch. home, doing music. I was, wow. you know, modeling, and that's how, that was our main income. And yep. then the world shut down in 2020. Obviously, I stopped modeling. Josh stopped working, yep. and they, they got let go from his job. Well, that was my first... So Real corporate When that job. happened, I had like an actual corporate job, like salary, benefits, yep. and then that hit and everyone like lost their job from the company. Um, so I was just like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the real world. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, but I really did some soul searching during that period of time. And for me, you know, people have different experiences, but for me, it was a real like wake up point in my right. life. Um, and then she started posting on TikTok and I was like, I'm not, oh, I'm done with it. like social so media. Done like, with it. I was just so yeah. eaten up by it and like kind of over that point in my life. And then right. she started posting these, but what she was seeing were the videos that were working were, oh, gosh, should I say it or? He was the talent. He was the star. So when you started, were you I, guys both in it? Or was no, it, it was me. Yeah. I was trying to do it for modeling. It was like my, my model name. It was me just like styling and like the videos weren't doing well. And then I, I did one video of me and Josh, like our wedding day, and it, I remember waking up and I screamed, I was like, oh my God, this has 200,000 Right, views. the craziest feeling. Yeah. I was like, what uh, No, is I think it? the and one it, got like a million. Well, no, right? it got to, it kept racking and racking, and then after 24 hours, it had like 2 million views, and it was like, I went from 200 followers to yep. 15,000 yep. in one day, and like, yeah, it was just, That's it's unheard like, of. Right. Instagram didn't have that type of engagement. So this was 2019? 2020. 2020. This was um, and April I had, of I had 2020. never seen, like, with all of the, the social media avenues I've taken, yeah. I had never seen that type of engagement and growth as At all. when we started posting TikTok. So I was like, maybe there's something here. And then we just, yeah. you know, we had no job or anything. We, I literally Googled... Uh, but like TikTok, TikTok talent ma- management, management. <laughs> found a management, which I'm still friends with those, some yeah. of the guys in it today. Got signed to them. Like we got our first brand deal. You yeah, know? it was like a protein company. Oh my god, company. I'll never and, like, that brand deal. And I was familiar with the space because of modeling. Like t- you know, having management, having agents. So like, yeah. I, it wasn't like we were new to like the whole world, but like new to I. And I knew of influencers. I remember I was modeling for this company. And I was modeling with them for like five years, and then yeah. all of a sudden they brought an influencer in the model, and I was like, oh, "They're Who taking my you? job. Right. What are they doing?" Now I get it. Like they had the platform, they had the audience. It, it, it audience. It is different than traditional modeling. Yep. Um, and then we, our first brand deal was with uh, Vital Protein. Wow. Uh, and I'll never forget. It was like the best day of our lives. We're like, "This is so cool. Like you can." Like, do I'm getting. This. Well, we didn't money. realize that like, you can get paid money yeah. for this. And, like you would always see people, and you're like. Uh, they're not even doing work. Like, how right. are they making this money? But then you go into that world, and you're like, oh my gosh! And I always ask people, like, how do you like how do you make money as an influencer? I'm always like, what you put in is what you get out. You can do yeah. nothing and make right. nothing, or you can go full in and really put all the work in, and that's yeah. how you can get out because it truly is. The more work you do, the more you can make. And TikTok, I mean, completely changed our lives. So when you when you posted that video yeah. that went crazy with yeah. both of you in it, is that when you then? Like, did you make that, like, were you able to recognize that? In the oh, moment? I immediately knew Josh was my ticket. <laughs> yeah. so it took, like, a little bit of massaging to, like, kind of get me in then. Yeah. You know, after well, Josh, that first like, brand deal, I was still... on board. Because I was like, wow, yeah. there's an opportunity here. Right. And then we got signed to management. I was like, okay, let's just, let's give this a go. And so then we were doing these, like, very couple It was the prank. So, we were, so like, we... the first, I would like to say we were, like, the first on the couple prank. Not yeah. the, f- not the first, but we were in the OG I mean, yeah. crowd. Like, right. we, there were some, there's still some that are, I mean, everyone's still doing it. Yeah, yeah. But we were in that, I mean, we were making trends and pranks every day. It was, like, pranking my husband by stealing his popcorn. Like, so silly, yeah. but, like, the videos were going viral. It went crazy. It went crazy. And, and yeah. then I could dip my toe a little bit into that acting thing, because I'm a huge movie buff. I've yeah. always wanted to act. Yeah. So this and is kind of, like, my first intro right. to acting. So she's like, hey, you need to do this video. You need to act like this. And I'm like, okay. And I think that's what kind of went viral you were seeing these couples doing the lovey-dovey kissy stuff and we weren't really doing that we were obviously like acting and josh was playing on it but he was like sassy like, it was more like, realistic <laughs> sure uh, yeah you know 
And that's kind of what took off. And then, like I said, Josh, we just started pranking and every day. We were doing three to four videos a every day, day. Every day. Just wow. busting out content. Pranking them out, yeah. And then, yeah, and here we are. <laughs> fast. That's really fast. And two it's kids crazy. later. And so. two kids and later. And two yeah. kids later, which yeah. is, yeah, that's even crazy. crazier. <laughs> yeah. So we'll get back to all the social media stuff. Yeah. But I'm curious, how often do you guys cook at home? Because I've seen the kitchen. It's beautiful kitchen yes. that you guys have in your it's house. It's this one. I've never cooked in our kitchen. So oh, wait, actually, I did. I did a home chef meal. You did a home chef. Um, <laughs> it counts. I am head chef. Executive head chef. chef yes, of chef. Household. Um, and I love to cook. Uh, yeah. Again, I've always liked to eat healthy. Um, right. I'm very picky yeah. about my food. Mm. Um, so whenever I discovered, oh, wow, I can be in control of the taste and the texture and yeah. everything like that. And I think you can speak to it. It's an art form. It, it is. It truly Absolutely. is. Absolutely, yeah. And I'm very artistic. So like, I love painting, drawing, music. This yeah. is just another side of it. Um, I'm still trying to perfect the cooking side uh, yeah. of things. But I like to troubleshoot stuff and learn and, and almost master. Like I really, truly, um, don't put me on the spot here, but I feel like I've mastered my scrambled egg at this point. Yeah. I've made it the same way for five years. He is the egg master. Um, I don't know if I'm... You know, I'm trying like different ways to cook it and everything. Yeah. I don't do poach or anything crazy like Not that. Yet. But, he does you know, scramble. I, do a, I just do a straight up scramble and there's different techniques and yeah. I found one that works for me. And also, thank you for the recommendation. I use made in everything. They're great, right? I love it. Yeah. Um, so that changed the game for me, getting a yeah. good, uh, good workflow there. So yeah, yeah I I'm, cook 99% of everything. 100%. I'm impatient. I yeah. can't. I've. It's just not for me. Yeah. It's just not. It's for just me. gotten a little I more difficult to cook now with screaming kids like hanging on it's you. <laughs> You're just like, it's really tough. But <laughs> even before kids, I was never into no. cooking. I'm. Uh, but I didn't mind. Like I enjoy cooking and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and we yeah. Um, okay, so I'm gonna show you guys this here. So you. You remember we made the pasta dough on your podcast, remember yes, that? Yes, yes. And it was kind of like pretty firm, right? Yeah. So this one, you don't have to touch it, but you can kind of see like it's very, very soft. Yeah. yeah. Um, which like with gnocchi, you want it to be like, you don't want it to be this very firm, like hard bite. Yeah. So that, all that was in there was ricotta cheese, Parmesan cheese, um, salt, pepper, lemon zest, um, eggs and flour. That's it. Wow. Comes together Just really fast. Just uh, Yes. Okay, yeah. not cold. And then, like, typically, we would, I would let this rest for, like, an hour or so. I've already got some already made. Um, and then we're going to start getting it cut up and made, which is where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send some over to you guys and have you guys help me. I already have some already made in the freezer that we can use if these don't work out, but I trust that you guys will. Okay. Uh, <laughs> You're prepared. <laughs> yeah, we've got to be ready, just in case. Just in case. So... What's your favorite thing to cook besides scrambled eggs? Mm, uh, steak, filet mignon. Steak. And I bake it. You bake it? I bake it. Um, so what I do is I let them come to rest. I massage them with some uh, Montreal steak seasoning, Ooh. Uh, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of sea salt. Yeah. And then I uh, put them in the oven, 405, for about 45 to 50 minutes. I flip them halfway through. Yeah. Chef, they come out just... They're pretty good. Oh, delectable. Yeah, I'll have to make it for you sometime. Well, get sometimes. Your, sometimes. <laughs> I gotta come over. It depends over. on where I get the steak. Some of them don't cook all the way through. I'm trying to get better at temp checking those bad boys. Yeah. But, um, sometimes they, they come out a little... A little bloody. A little rare. But uh, it's okay. You know, a little chewy. Yeah. Um, but most of the times I, I hit it, they're just moist, just melt in your mouth. Yeah. Um, and what I found is it comes down to the quality of meat for me. Of course, absolutely. Um, so, See, you know, which, it's hit or miss sometimes when we order it. I mean, I think food in general is just yes. the... Like, yeah. that's how... Especially with pasta, like, with pasta, especially because it's two ingredients, like flour and eggs, like, yeah. you have to use the best yeah. ingredients because if not, like, you're going to tell a difference. And, yeah. like... There's no room to like hide behind. Like this isn't like a French braised dish where you can like hide behind a bunch of butter yeah. and like red wine and stuff. Like you have to really make it the best you can. I could eat pasta or noodles every single day. Really? Huge mac and cheese. I'm, I'm just noodles. Yeah. I, Loves, love butter that. noodles is what I. Grew so up my on. son will not eat my pasta. Oh, wow. Like he'll eat it raw, but no, like stop. box mac and cheese like all day long. Why do kids do that? They really know how to. to well, get it's just you like right last night, I you know cooked the perfect dino nugget, yeah. and oh, Poppy, uh, Poppy nah. was like, "Nah." I want, she's like, "I want a yogurt pouch." Yeah. We're like, "This is your fifth one today. You can't have another." Yogurt but that's the way it goes as a parent. Like my my son, he has his own pasta extruder, and the one day like we made a video to send to like all our family of him using it and stuff. Yeah. And we spent like all day making this because you know how kids are. It yeah. takes yeah. like forever. 
We did it. We cooked it together. Got him sat down. He wouldn't even eat a bite. I'm like, Gavin, like, what do we do? We just spent all day with this. If it makes you feel better, Poppy has never had a noodle either. Really? She, well, she just, she won't Jesus. even do mac and cheese. Yeah. She's... She is Jagger is our one who's kind of more he'll eat your pasta. You yeah. know, he'll he'll yeah. try things. Right. Usually it's like, yeah. you know, on the floor, but he at least tries it. Poppy's just she's very picky. I guess like I am. So. Yeah. I feel like it's just kids go through that stage. If you would make like a Nutella chocolate yes. type of pasta, Poppy would of course devour it. Yeah, chocolate is like a no brainer. So we'll get these kind of rolled out into logs. Look at that precision. And then like some people with Nyonki like actually just like to keep them like this as little pillows, which okay. you can do. Um, but oh, yeah. just kind of oh, roll it on there. That's how you do it. Yeah, so I'll do a couple here. Look at that. And then we'll pass it over. Quick question, is there a reason you leave the bevel on the belly side? Or is that just how it rolls? Uh, it's just kind of how it rolls, nice. yeah. I always wondered. Yeah. Really no rhyme or reason to it. And that's honestly kind of like, which I don't even know if I consider gnocchi pasta, but. <laughs> uh, Did I pick the wrong one? <laughs> no, no, it's fine. I haven't made gnocchi in a while, so it was a good excuse to. <laughs> I was like, oh. But it's like, I kind of love that like it never actually has to be perfect and it's yeah. almost better if it's yeah. not. Like if it's not uniform and yeah. whatever. Cause like even when like people are making it at home for the first time, like if you screw it up, like. Well, that, you can it, probably it still it like, eat it. Yeah, it like, uh, what do you call it? Inflates when the water hits. It doesn't. I mean, yep, I'll yep, never exactly. forget the meal I had when I came home with after having Poppy. It was your pasta. You brought us over. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah. the yes, best. I believe. Oh, my. The best I forgot meal about that. I've ever had. Yeah, delicious. Yeah. Absolutely delicious. That should be a, like a requirement here in Pittsburgh. I think that was the first time I met you guys. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, you just brought it over. And yeah, like, which is crazy. A stranger. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll take it. It yeah. was so good. Yeah. And that was so nice of you to do that. Well, but, I remember seeing you guys for a while on like just my TikTok feed. Yeah. And after a while, I was like, I'm going to follow these guys. And then I like I put it together that you guys are in Pittsburgh. Yeah. I'm like, this is crazy. Like, yeah. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people, we could literally go to every Steelers game, every Pirates game, every Penguins game. We can literally say we're in Pittsburgh and still people don't realize we live in Pittsburgh. Yeah, a lot of people like will double, obviously everyone's on their phone so a lot of people like seen us or recognize us but they just generally like don't know we're from Pittsburgh even though like we're very, I'm very proud to be, you right. know, a Yens are from Pittsburgh and it's yeah. just, it's just funny to see like when we're out people are like, wait, I thought you guys lived in like New York or California. A lot of people get, say Probably California. LA, yeah. LA or yeah. yeah. Which makes sense. Yeah, yeah but and Pittsburgh's like the, it's like the secret hidden gem. You know, you can go to is. L.A., you can go to New York, but this yeah. is something about Pittsburgh. And I feel like people, they think they see on social media and they just assume things. And we live a very, very, very normal yes. life. Yeah. I just share it online and somehow right. have 15 million people watching. Right. That's what, right. you know, yeah. I mean, and I do know there, there are other creators who do live a different lifestyle sure. than we do, which is amazing. But like, we're just... We're not parents, for we're not, yeah, we right. love living a low, yeah. ease, try yeah. to slow pace Well, I think, style. too, oh. with us, what happened, like, we did a lot of maturing and a lot of growing before we went on social media, where a lot of the times you're, you're, you're seeing doing these younger kids who yes. are, like, yeah. growing up on camera, right. and I can't imagine, gosh, the things I did in my 20s on camera, <laughs> uh, I wouldn't it's, be, yeah. It's really scary, like, I can't it imagine, is. like. It is. Yeah. It's but the shame is you. Like, you live in Pittsburgh, you have your family, but Right, and before the social, like, I already yeah. had, like, I was already yeah. doing stuff. Like, yeah, you've you know, been it's, through it's the grind of, like, right. you know, the mental Olympics of growing up and stuff. So, like, right. I think that's important to have, especially when you're going to put stuff out online because, of as you know, people are just ruthless. Crazy. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. Crazy. You just got to be like, all right, whatever. Like, yeah. the amount of people that are in the comments probably right now saying, like, where are your gloves? Oh, like, yeah. oh, I know. you <laughs> people are absolutely insane. So we're going to toss these over. Oh, so they're going to be a little softer than you think. Okay. So let me give you, you guys. Go first. Oh, gosh. Oh, we both these. have our own. You both have okay. your own. So you want to kind of push it down, but not too hard. Because, again, they're soft, so it'll stick. So kind of push it down a little bit. Oh, gosh. It's... That's okay. <laughs> Here, hang on. It's a little sticky. Let's put a little flour on there. There we go. Should I re... No, that one's okay. Yeah, that's fine. We can oh, I'll eat that one. <laughs> what we're sticking. Let's a little flour. Okay. Here we go. Ready? A little push. Oh wait, maybe am I doing it? Too? How did you do that so good? So like, I kind of like push it like down on like the three quarter end of it, okay. and then just use my thumb, roll oh, it. He's letting the okay. edge of it to kind of like catch it. Another one of those. Oh, my, not looking too pretty. <laughs> okay, so here. <laughs> 
Not bad. That's better. That's not bad. It's truly an it's be- This is art. Oh, mine aren't cute. No, nah, it's fine. They're little dumplings. They're fine. <laughs> Have you seen that short on Disney Plus with the little, the dump? what's it called? The little dumpling with dumpling. the- Dumpling? I haven't. You haven't seen that on no. Disney Plus? Oh, yeah, what's- yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a really sad little short. It she like, makes a dumpling and like, cooks them. Okay. <laughs> but it's like it's supposed to represent her son. It's Boyo or oh. Boy, uh, such a beef. I don't know. No, I can't say I've seen it's it. It's really good. It's on Disney, you said? Disney, Disney. Plus. Uh, I'm, I'm crushing these. <gasps> oh. That one looks good. That's okay. That one recovered. How, how do you do it like that, though? That's crazy. That one's almost there. Oh, Josh, that's looking a little rough. Don't worry. Here we go. Oh. Perfect. Look at that. Who did that one? Oh, yeah. She's a pro now. <laughs> She's a pro. Oh, my gosh. Now, what is this little... Spiral. The board? The board called. So some people call it a gnocchi board. Some people call it a cavatelli board. Cavatelli. Um, oh, I shit. call them a garganelli board. Oh. Um, but there's, like, as I've, like, studied pasta and just Italian, like, food culture, there's, like, yeah. I found that there's so many, like, one shape of pasta can have like eight different names depending yeah. on like the village you're in, the Captain Nona you talk to. Went, yeah, whatever that was. I went to Milan for the first time. Um, when was that? And Abby is very Italian. Yeah, yeah what, but when did, when did I go? A couple months ago. A couple months ago, yeah. And I did have pasta there and it was yeah. very, very good. Back yeah. to her. You're probably like, what, 50% right, Italian? Good. I'll yeah. take these back. Oh, thank you. I got but that Italian, was but... much harder than yeah. you made it look. No, it's easy. <laughs> well, when a professional does and, it. And like the more you do it, just the like, I definitely, the first time I did it, was not a pro at it by any mean. Yeah, anytime we go to Favorite like dish. an Italian restaurant, Josh is like, do they have chicken parm? That's I feel go-to. like that's my go-to. At an Italian restaurant like that I've never been to, it's just like... Now, is that like an actual Italian dish? Or is that an American... I was going to say, that's an American yeah. thing. I think I remember going to Mom being, I don't think, I don't yeah. think chicken parm did on this menu. There's something about when that marinara... With I mean, I like grew up with my mom making it all the time. Like, it's, it's just, just like, yeah, my mom made it. Oh my God, and there's so many different ways. But like anytime it. I post a video of like... I posted a chicken parm video. I post like anything with like pasta and chicken. The Italians in the comments just go crazy. No. Oh my god! Because that's like they just don't eat chicken with pasta. Like that's just not a thing. So. Yeah, I'm try it. Uh, I'm have like, you yeah. have you seen uh, Sarah and Carlo on? I don't think so. They're, we have them on our podcast. They're TikTokers, they're and he's um, they met, and he's Italian, and he just okay. uh, he came here. His and they went super viral of like. She took him to Olive Garden. Okay, I yeah. have seen yes. And they are so sweet. You should connect with him. He would funny. be funny to that have That is really fun. funny. Yeah, They're it's been interesting. Sweet. Like, Because my whole take with the pasta is like, for social media purposes, is to like, tradition means non-tradition. Like, there's rules, but like, sometimes rules are meant to be broken. Yes. And I'm also trying to like, engage a new audience with pasta making because a lot of yeah. people think it's very intimidating and like, oh, I can never do that. And it's just like, yeah. you can. Like, it's my so three-year-old good. can do it. Like, yeah. you can do it. Like, I trust. He might not eat it, but he can make it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. So, the chicken. Do you ever make chicken parm at home? I do. I actually, I was just going to make it the other night, um, but I didn't have breadcrumbs. I didn't, <laughs> didn't have Parmesan have... cheese. I didn't have enough of the stuff. So, so what did you have? So what I did was I ordered Chick-fil-A, and I used their chicken with a little bit of marinara sauce, a little bit of shredded cheese, and I made my own little chicken parm. Okay, that's a sandwich. It was actually pretty good. Yeah, that's definitely chicken parm. <laughs> you put uh, a little marinara on the Chick-fil-A sandwich. Yeah. Those pickles hit the marinara with the chicken. Ew. There's something hey, about it. I mean, I'm not going to knock it till. <laughs> Josh oh, didn't know like that you needed breadcrumbs to make chicken parm. I was like, I'm like, I don't get it. Wait a second. He's like, stop. So this curveball. He like grilled chicken with adobo sauce or whatever it is, and then just put like some marinara on it. Yeah, it worked. That's just fun. protein. And he didn't realize you needed eggs for the to you make need it eggs. stick. Yeah, you do. You do need <laughs> eggs. Yeah. Oh, and by look at those yolks. Those They're beautiful. Yolks. They really are. Um, Gorgeous. Wow. We actually just got to, and you guys will link it down below Please, if yeah. you want to see it. We just went to Arkansas to Happy Eggs headquarters. Oh. We got to make pasta on the chicken farm. Uh, like, is that see, where these are from? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, like, they really are incredible. Can you eggs. get these locally, or do you have yes, to? Yes. Everybody locally? always thinks, like, where can I, I can't get them. And I'm yeah, like, I they sell them. them at Walmart, Target, Giant really? Eagle, Fresh Time, like, Look everywhere. Look at those yolks. I got to get those. Yeah. They're incredible. And, like, obviously for social, like, they look great on camera, but yeah. they really do that's, taste better. That's the chicken getting everything it needs right there. 100%. Right it really is. And, too, it's kind of interesting. We found out that, so these cartons here, the Heritage Breed, mm-hmm. 
They are the only egg uh, brand in the country that has those breed of hens. Okay. So like no other brand will ever have, have like this, which is because the egg industry is like they all kind of use the same chicken. Big egg, so like, yeah. you know? It's, yeah. it's kind of crazy. So wow. Yeah, when I first like started using these eggs on social, people thought that like, oh, you're editing the videos. Like, no, I remember. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, what's the most amount of eggs you've used so far? Ten thousand. Is that the Mister? Is that 10, the Mister Beast, Beast one? Yeah, which was. That's in. How, who cracked ten thousand eggs? So we had like an assembly line. Probably like 25 like uh, college student volunteers. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's probably like 30 of us total like cracking and separating and it was wild. We had like a refrigerated 18 wheeler with like a forklift going back and forth just cuz like keeping them in the right temperature yeah. and stuff and like oh, Don't want to hit that danger zone. No, yeah. no, 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 no. I just had an experience we ordered our groceries. Yeah. They delivered them at 6 a.m. The window was between 6 and 8. It was a long night with the babies. Yeah. So we didn't wake up till 8. That's our oh, first so time like sleeping in in a long time. Those groceries sat out. We had perishables, mind you, for over two hours yeah. in the danger zone. Jeez. Um, luckily, some of the grocery bags were insulated. They now do the foil liners, like yep. some of the yep. milk. So cool to the touch. I referenced a couple of my friends, a couple of family <laughs> members. They said, if it's still cold, it's probably fine. It was some you know, yogurt pouches, some milk. Right. Um, obviously, the bacon didn't make it, yeah. you know, stuff like that. What's the um, longest, like, in, do you know, like, the, like, egg should be out, or, like... It depends, yeah. like, it depends, like, it's hard to say. Aren't, is it, aren't we, like, the only ones who have to, like, refrigerate our eggs? Like, yeah. Yeah, it's wild. What? Yeah. We, like, I mean, like... Yeah, like, if you go in Europe, like, eggs are just, like, on the... Yeah, you like, don't have to refrigerate them. They're, like, just on a regular aisle with, like, like flour and, yeah. like... Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I don't know what it is. We gotta uh, look into that. Yeah, I don't know. I should know that. I yeah, probably should I don't know. know that. Yeah, we need but to look into we'll that. We'll figure it out. I still think if, if I was walking down like a grocery store aisle in Europe, I would like do a double take. Like, yeah. that doesn't look right. Yeah, yeah. Like, let's yeah. get this in the fridge. Come on. That uh, is weird. Yeah, but it is what it is. Okay, chicken. So I typically, I don't know about you guys. Are they so flat? Uh, so I just cut them really thin. See, that's what you're. Mi- you need to I do just, that. I just did this because, like, I like for chicken parm. Like, I like. I don't like like a giant. Pepper. I don't no, either. Yeah. That's right. I'm weird with chicken. Thin and crispy it's- is like the best way. You know. Gorgeous. Look at those. Hey, look, you're and that's the other thing I, I'm running into issues. I need a better chef knife. They're all dull. Mm. Um, I don't have any that is worth resharpening. The ones I have right now are pretty much throwaways. Yeah. Um, so maybe um, after our broadcast here, I can get with you and we can yeah. figure out a good chef knife for me. Oh, maybe I've a got... custom handled one. I don't uh, yeah, know. there's some really good ones. We'll look into it. That was like... Back when I was a chef in restaurants, I feel like I would buy a new knife like every month. Just like, really, is it a thing? Like, didn't you have a whole oh, kit? Oh, I love. You, like, I, I have like, so like, many. It's not yeah. even fun. Because that that's a big part of the yeah. I mean, that's process. like that's yeah. everything. If you don't have you know a sharp knife, you're you're running into a lot of issues and a lot of injuries. Right. I'm sure, you've like, run into look it how about. much seat. That's great. Josh will put like a sprinkle of salt and be like, "That's enough." Yeah. So I not only seasoned that, and hopefully when you taste it, you don't like. Hopefully it tastes perfectly seasoned, but. Yeah. Already seasoned the flour, already seasoned the breadcrumbs. So like every layer Got is seasoned, it. which is how it should be for like mm-hmm. any type of food. Noted. So. Josh loves a plain, plain, yeah. and I'm the complete opposite. When I eat Chick Fil A, I have every sauce lined up, and yeah. I have to dip. Right. Every bite has to have a dip. I'm gonna be in my kitchen rewatching this episode. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Going back. Hey, whatever what it takes. Do? Whatever what it do takes. You do? My mom has the kids right now while we're here, and she was like, are you going to be bringing pasta home? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I think so. Yeah, absolutely. Because when you were on our podcast, she took the, some leftovers home, oh, and really? she was like, it's so good. Yeah. I'm just going to be FaceTiming you next time I cook my chicken parm. You can. Wow. So this is just like your typical like standard breading, flour, egg, Definitely missed bread that. Crumbs. Uh, you, the egg step? No, the flour. had no <laughs> idea. That's huge. Never, never did that. It's big. Yeah, that's a big. Step. It's a big step. How were you making chicken parm? You were just putting salt, pepper, and thinking it was going to make a. Crumble? I still am trying to figure out how he's <laughs> been doing it. <laughs> I was missing a lot. I think I was using the olive lo- olive oil as a sticking you were. agent you were. instead uh, of the egg. It yeah. wasn't sticking too well. And then um, my breadcrumb. One time I didn't have any, so I toasted bread. Yeah, that's I'm fine. Sure. That'll work. It wasn't great, but, but <laughs> it was wheat bread. It wasn't very good. Wheat bread. Yeah. It was like the Whole Foods, like Harvest super healthy. Like, <laughs> yeah. right, so maybe not the cardboard. best. Yeah. And I didn't season it. So it was healthy, though, I guess. Yeah. So as we said in the intro, you guys are guest number one, which 
crazy. I really do appreciate you guys coming on. Because the whole idea with this podcast is to kind of showcase people in a different light and really just have a meal. Because that's obviously what I love to do the most Mm -hmm. is cook. And cooking for people is like one thing that I really miss from restaurants, you know, is like being... It's usually just me in my studio, like cooking by myself for a camera, and it's like, yeah, yeah. that's kind of boring. Like, it's not fun. Like, you want to be able to cook for people. Yeah. So, this is going to be hopefully the way to to do that. No, thank you. You're working for... your way right into our heart and soul with this meal. <laughs> that looks so good. It definitely has not been a hard sell when I've reached out to guests. Like, hey, do you want to come on? And you're yeah. also like, I'll yeah. feed you. Like, <laughs> usually podcasts don't feed you. So, this is... Uh, Hopefully a nice little now, selling how, point Now, what if people. you had some coming on that was vegan? We'll make it work. Yes, yeah. for uh, food. Uh, Dietary restrictions. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we can do that. So what would your, like, how would you make pasta? So There's vegan pasta. So I'm a lot of the chef, oh, Mr. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I'm, as- I'm asking sorry. the chef. Please, go ahead. Sorry. So if you've ever <laughs> seen the videos of mine where it's like the pasta coming out of the extruder machine. Yes. Yeah. So that's all flour and water. So that's 100% uh, vegan. Yeah, so like, okay. that would be like how you would make like dried Those pastas. Those videos would go super yeah. viral. People love them. <laughs> go crazy. There's something like it's like a it's brain massage. It really is. You just like watch. To it. this day, my like um, most viewed YouTube short is a video of the machine that I like let go and I did the voiceover that like my boss like said no more long noodles and I made it. <laughs> oh, like that video has like a hundred million views, That's like insane. which is crazy. Yeah, people really. Then we start relaxed. getting colory, the purple pasta. Yeah, the colors cool. are fun. Poppy would love that. Oh, yeah. yeah now, fun. no need to uh, spray the pan or anything like that. Pans. So we're going to cook it here in some olive oil. Ah, we're just holding it. Yep. The pan's a holding station. Yeah, so we'll use that, this pan here when we go in the oven to ah. melt the cheese. Now, do you watch shows like Top Chef? Not anymore. Okay. I used to. Um, every now and then, like, if I have friends that are competing and stuff, I'll, like, yeah. at least tune in for, like, their finale or whatever. But yeah. besides that, like, it's just, I don't really watch much TV. I don't know yeah. about you guys. Well, you're but, like, oh, we're TV people. Are you? <laughs> well, um, at nighttime, like, that's our... Children's shows, mostly. Yeah. Movies. Yeah. We're, no, we're, we're big we're... Bluey fans. Oh, Huge, yeah. yes, yes, yes. That's Bluey. always on. Poppy we do, know? like, a good Netflix series or a movie at night. Yeah, when the kids To, like, bed. decompress. Yeah. Which makes sense. And I love movies. You do too. I like movies. I like movies more than shows. Shows yes, is just yes. like... Although yeah. shows have been getting very good on like movies. There, there are some like shows that I'll movie. watch yes. that so. yeah, I get hooked and like I don't leave my bed for a couple yeah. of days. Like I'm just hooked on it, you know? We get into those. We, yeah. we usually binge through them pretty quickly. Okay. We're going to do something here. So, do you guys have... What, what's your like... Um, your range setup at home is it induction gas induction. induction you like it love it yeah uh, we had a gas yep. before um i watched a couple youtube videos of people that have switched from gas to induction yeah i love it now you got to be careful with induction that baby gets that can get very hot very quick very fast so once i learned you know the settings and where everything is um yep. but gosh you throw water on there you're boiling and it's crazy it's really amazing you can really dial it in like i'm i'm probably not the professional that should be using an induction but i yeah. feel like you can really it's similar to the flame, right? You I can prefer dial, induction, yeah. Yeah, you can okay. dial it in. This is induction, yeah. Yeah, you just, it, there's just a more precision. It's so precision, much more precise. It really easier to is. clean. You're not getting stuff down in. Oh, my like, God. I'm a messy cooker, chef, and yes. I just got stuff spread. You know what I mean? Well, we got to work on that. Yeah. I mean, look, at your, look at your station over <laughs> I know. Look at my station. What guys doing? <laughs> Sorry, chef. <laughs> Man, <laughs> unacceptable. No, Josh is, is really messy. Really I mean, we messy. just got sauce on the, you know, there's backsplash. So, I mean, there's just stuff There's egg. He's cooking here, and there's egg over there, splatter. I'm like, well, how does that even happen? Yeah. Yeah, we got to work Not on good. That. And I always tend to get whatever these two little knobs are that hold the handle inside the pan. I always get egg stuck oh, under those little knobs. Oh, that is the worst. Yeah, that's the worst. Now, what's, is that more? This is just more olive oil. Yeah, I ran out of that bottle. Do you have a specific olive oil that you, like, really love? Not really. But, like, a lot of people for, like, pan-frying chicken stuff, they use vegetable oil or, or canola oil. But I just... Does that make it, like... Uh, it's more sizzly or not like, really it's just like a lot of people think that like it's not okay to cook with olive oil yeah, yeah. but i think it is i like, love olive and i love the flavor of it it's better for you yeah um so we'll do this in olive oil and then a little bit of butter too just to kind of help it really brown my friend drinks this every morning really what? yeah he, great he drinks it every morning wow oh like two teaspoons every morning i mean it's really good for it's supposed to be really good for you i think <laughs> like i think so i mean 
I don't know if you should be drinking it. I cook with it. I cook with it. I cook with it, yeah. I can't say I've ever drank it, but <laughs> to each their own. Should we do a shot? <laughs> Let's everyone do a shot of all of them. We're, we're getting crazy in here. Okay. Oh, boy. Oh, God. Should we not? Woo! All right. We're here. We're here. Before you guys got here, this place smelled like gas because I could not get that oh, lit. Yeah. And so it was... I think they're trying to get rid of gas stoves. They should. Supposedly. They're just... I don't... I, don't, I mean, also, too, like, sometimes, though, like, just from when I was a chef, like, I do, like, cooking with gas. Like, yeah. there is, like, something I mean, with an flame. open flame. Like, yeah. there is something to For it. For sure. All right. So we're going to drop... We'll do two of these to start. And you, roughly how long do we go per side? Well, see, so if you notice that, like, you didn't hear, like, a big sizzle didn't. right away. Yeah, I was, I was looking for it's that. It's because it's olive oil, so I'm not trying to, like, go too crazy. Yep. So that's why I'm going to add that. butter to help it brown, because Got I'm it. not going to do, like, super, super crazy high heat. Because um, I always mess this up. I always put it never enough time or too much time yeah. on well, one side. The nice thing, too, with this is with doing the, like, very thin chicken cutlets is... We're not going to have to really worry about making sure that it's cooked. Yeah. Because we're def it's going to be fully cooked pretty much by the time it comes out of here, and then it's still going to go in the oven. So, like, that's what's nice versus, like, a giant chicken breast that you're, like, cutting into it, making sure it's cooked. That's, that's cooking like, uneven yeah, that's right. from the like. center. Exactly. So this kind of just makes sure that we're good to go. So where are you guys at now with the social media stuff? Obviously, you're, like... Giant, <laughs> yeah, and I feel still. like actually too. I, you guys got nominated for a Kids Choice Award, yeah, right? yeah which is yeah, yeah, insane. Great, yeah, like great. I remember watching that as a kid. Yeah, like same. that was like I want to get slime. I never <laughs> thought that was like even a possibility. I didn't even know they had the category, and then we yeah. got news from our agents. We found out um, the day before they announced. Like yeah. they were just like we were like wow. this is amazing. We worked with Nickelodeon, um, we did a Paw Paramount. Patrol. We loved Paw Patrol. We've done. Um, We've done, um, oh my gosh, Spongebob, yeah. which I grew up on. Pa yep. You know, Poppy's love. <laughs> oh God, that was wow. terrible. Impressive. <laughs> that was scary. <laughs> so when, yeah, when we got that news, it was really exciting. So we go to LA in like two weeks wow. before that. We're really excited about. But yeah, no, I, I love TikTok. I love creating. I love, I'm really loving Instagram Reels right yeah. now too. Real quick, just yeah. to pause real quick. We're going to add a garlic clove in here, but with the peel and everything still on. Get so the garlic's town. not going to burn, but we're still going to get all that flavor oh, into there. Um, see, that's what. Well, you're I missing. need to get some of these. I only have the powder in the can. Yeah, we, we got to. We got to work on that too. The real. Stuff. Now, have you seen the thing where you can throw this in water and it peels? Uh, no, but what, how we would do it in restaurants is we would take like all the cloves out like this, yes. and then we would basically put it in like two different bowls that are the same size, put a lid on and shake it, and you would get them all peeled. So. I just saw it. a thing like that for grapes. Parents are putting grapes in bags and shaking it, and then really? all the grapes fall off or something like that. Do you see that? I don't know about that. Some of those grapes are pretty on there. But back to the social media thing. Yeah, please. We're we're um, it's expanding, and I think what we've seen is like obviously like Instagram's really big right now. We feel and yeah. like that seems to be our powerhouse. TikTok cool. is always still there, yeah. but with these social media you know pages, there's so many, and you're you're kind of cross pollinating your content and like repurposing it and everything and. It's been tougher for us, especially with kids, to do more of the YouTube. So our YouTube's kind of yeah. fallen back. We have gotten back into it. But to do that longer form, you know, there's a lot more to it. And you want to put more polished stuff out. Right. You're not for just the trying long to put up yeah, like a quick video. Correct. Right. And I think for us and our way of life, having two kids, for us to go shoot a uh, reel or a TikTok, so it's, it's just much easier, more easier for our lifestyle. So, um, yeah. yeah, but we've, we've definitely tailored back... Um, really putting our kids online like we're kind of more protective but yeah. they're still we sprinkle them in here and there and but because um, they're because poppy's older now she she don't want to she's got a person she's got a she's doing her own right. thing she she loves she she mommy can you take pickers of me yeah <laughs> she said pickers <laughs> i was like she don't take pictures and she has her moments and if she wants to be in a video she wants to do something sure i love the um, other day i saw the video you posted of her doing the voiceover she loves yeah. adorable she yeah she lo and like hey whatever she she wants to be a voiceover actor yeah. one day right. we'll let her like She's really into cheerleading now. She has her own personality. Jagger is just wild. Yeah. And I think we're really finding ourselves again. I'm sure as parents, you, you right. know, and, and your wife as well. Yeah. Poppy was my world for a year. Then I was pregnant. And then Jagger, I was consumed in this world. And now that my kids are a little more independent, I'm like, ooh, what can I do with, 
my time now. I, I remember like my hobbies again. Same yeah. as Josh. We're getting like, back into modeling. You just walked the uh, Sports Illustrated. Yeah, like that and was insane. working for Sports Illustrated. So that, and all this stuff starting to come back, and now I'm yeah. actually having more time to get back into music. I pretty much shelled my guitar almost for a year. Oh, more uh, than that. Especially when Jagger and. I love music, and it, it's just always that very hard thing because you're so hard on yourself, especially creatively. Right. And I was just like, it's not worth it, it's not worth it, oh my gosh, everything I'm doing. But now I have this, like, like Abby said, we're finding ourselves this new perspective where I'm like, yeah. I'm not putting out music because I want to, like, make it music now and, like, be famous for music. It's like, I truly love it. It's yeah. a passion. So it's yeah. like, I just want to put out music because it's a part of me. It's a part of my artistic not side. Not that you have to or anything. It's like, yeah. you do exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, I love it. We're so. so grateful how we've, I feel like we've grown on TikTok. We started with couples. Then I got pregnant. We shared our early family life, and we're still sharing it, but now... We're sharing now that our other passions of the modeling, the music, the fitness, the, the cleaning, cleaning the videos, you know, and all that stuff. So yeah. design, and, yeah, yeah right. Both kind of like leaning into our own separate paths, but then encompassing it into a whole. So it's it's been really good. Uh, a lot of work, and we love it. So and we're so grateful for having all this support and help because I feel like a lot of people watch our stuff and are yeah. like, "How can they do that with two kids? We have right. a lot of help. Right. Yeah, we have. Right. I mean, my mom is with us. Um, my yeah. mom is an angel. She." I begged her to retire from her job right. of nursing for 20-some years yeah. to come help us with Poppy. And then it turned into part-time, which then turned into full-time. Yeah. And she was still living in Ohio. Wow. I wow. begged them to sell their house. Yeah. And we helped move them it's up incredible. here. So that's the only reason why we're able to be doing these yeah. things. And Josh's family is very close by as well. We have their I help. I feel like it's- people, too, just like they see what's, what you guys put out on the internet. They're like, oh, man, they've like... That's not reality. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have no idea. Like no. you're seeing like a very small. I was saying you're seeing an hour of our, our day where it's like yes, we get this hour, two hour break to get away, film a video from the kids, and right. then come back to you know reality, reality. Of, of of real life. So right, you guys are still parents. Like you're yes. still like it's everything that people just. I think we found a good balance, and yeah. I'm sure you feel the same right. way. You know, it's it's tough to get away from the kids, but also Absolutely. I think it's great to show them that. You're working and yeah. you're following your passions because, yeah. you know, it shows them that they can do that as well. Yeah. And we recently got an office space, um, which I flipped the upstairs for my music and Abby has all her stuff downstairs. But that was super important and we're happy we were able to do that because it was tough separating home and work. And it got, we felt guilty sometimes because we're trying to work and like our kids don't understand. They're like, mommy, daddy, why are you working on your phone? You know, and it's just like, you feel guilty, but you're trying to work. So having that space now, we can kind of go Full to separation. work. Because that's the thing. It's so. like my mom, when she comes to our house to watch the kids, and it's like you can't really get away in your no. in your house, especially. And which I don't want to get away from my kids either. Right. I don't want to be doing that. So it's nice. We I think we're in a really good spot. We're feeling really good. Still feeling creative. Love, like Josh said, love sprinkling the family content in. Love the that we're finding ourselves yeah. and seeing where this goes. I. We have no plans on being pregnant anytime soon. I think that was for two years. We knew we wanted two children, but now we're like, hmm, yeah. let's take a breather and focus on ourselves and, and Poppy and Jagger right now. And we're feeling we can finally breathe again. Yeah, yeah which That's is first, nice. First two years, or first year with a toddler and a newborn. Oof. It's, it's I can't imagine. It's I cannot imagine. But we're forever, you know, we're grateful and blessed that we yeah, can do it. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, right. it's give me fine. one second. Let me. <laughs> that smells let me, so good. Let me try to make this not a mess mm. and not a grease fire in here. Okay, so the chicken's ready. Chef, I'm curious. Yes, what would be your next step? Um, what I would like to do is, I think we're ready for some. I would Parmesan. Okay. Maybe provolone. I don't know. Maybe mozzarella <laughs> on top. Yeah. Let's set the oven. We're going to put it in there for about 10 minutes. Uh, and we're just going to let that cheese melt. Josh loves the melted cheese. No sauce? Sauce after. Sauce after? We want the sauce warm. I thought the sauce was warm in the pan. But we need it cooked into so the chicken parm. So we sauce parm- and cheese. No. So we're going to go Parmesan first okay. to protect that. the breading from the sauce. Mm. We'll go Parmesan, um, sauce, mm. basil. Cool. And then mozzarella on top of that. So close. maybe a little bit more Parmesan. Close. We'll see. Yeah. It's so this bad. is the Parmesan? This is the Parmesan. Mm. Now, as a chef, would you ever get offended if you made like a steak? Yeah. Like a good, good steak and someone said, can I have A1 sauce? No. Okay. As a chef in a restaurant? No, absolutely not. Okay. 
<laughs> you're coming to the restaurant, you're paying for your meal, eat it. Yeah, well, yeah. there's that like, meme that goes around and like, it's a bunch of guys, I don't know if you've seen this at dinner, and they're, you know, the waiter comes around, and he's like, yes, yeah, so I'll get the filet mignon, uh, well done, and everyone's like, well done! Like, yeah. <laughs> like, I think that for like a period of my time as a chef, I was that type of chef where it's like, you're going to eat my food how I make yeah, it. Yeah. And I feel like that's just like a very like egotistical yeah. way to like, yeah. like they're coming to your restaurant. Like, yes, they want your food, but they also, everybody has Everyone's their own taste. Like, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting. I went to the, the MoMA when I was in New York. I was like 18 and uh, I had ste- like steak for the first time or something crazy and I asked for sauce and it was not good. Yeah. I asked for sauce. So I was just like, is that a, that's a thing though, I guess, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's that also a interesting. Restaurant like, that probably. like I worked at a restaurant once. I won't say the name, yeah. but the chef, I was just like a, a line cook there. This was like early in my career. And like on the menu, it said like no exceptions, no, like nothing. Like you weren't allowed to alter anything. Yeah. And it's just like, that's hard. You don't want red onions. On yeah. Whatever. Like, yeah. Why can't you like, just say no? Oh, it's like, yeah. it's too bad. It's too bad. Sorry, you're getting bud. It. You're getting yeah. it. It's just like, I feel like it's kind of crazy. Like, yeah, to, that's hard. To do like that. It is funny. When, we, when we were in Milan, um, we went out to dinner at this restaurant, and um, the waiter didn't speak any English. And uh, my friend that was with us, he spoke Italian, so he was able to communicate. And my, me and my uh, friend that was with me, we're really, really, really hungry, and we ordered like two big meals, and the waiter would like not put it in because he was like, "No, you're really? not going to eat that much." And wow. We were like, "No, we're hungry," oh, wow. and he was genuinely, and he he did it, and he was genuinely mad that we did not eat all the food. Wow! And I was like, "Oh no." <laughs> That's really interesting. Yeah, <laughs> it's just a different culture. It is. Yeah, it's... he's like, "What are the, these girls doing? They can't." We ordered like p- two pasta, steak, and. We just wanted to try everything. <laughs> now, is that oregano, chef? So this is oregano. This is Sicilian oregano. So different from Mexican oregano. Um, this is like the superior oregano, I think. It's like I've never been to Italy, but I've seen pictures. They like they'll have it like hanging You've like in the markets. Been yet. No, I was supposed to go in 2020, and then the pandemic happened. Then I had a kid, and then I had like the social media stuff. So yeah. it's like I don't have time anymore. <laughs> yeah. But hopefully soon. Hopefully you need soon. A, a a brand. You, you that or it's out. our 10 year wedding anniversary next oh. year and so we're hoping to oh, that'll, be, that'll be so nice adventure oh my gosh which is crazy 10 years like 10 years so we got married young. young yeah so we're that's five coming up i was like very into my career at the time and i was like i'm gonna be the best chef in the country well, and like we had been dating for like maybe a year and a half or so yeah. um and i like pretty much was like listen like we got to get married, like, because I need to focus on my career, which is like yeah. kind of a crazy thing to say, but it's like well, it worked. we both kind of yeah. knew, like, you know. we love when each you other. Know, like, you yeah. Know. yeah, thankfully, yeah. it's worked out, you yeah. know. So, yeah, um, ten years, wow, ten years, a long time. That's amazing. All right, so we've got some. Now, is that the mozzarella? This is. So we're just gonna slice it pretty thin. Wow. And we'll do a couple slices on each one. Now, do you like baking? Do I like baking? Yeah. No. <laughs> Your wife's the Yeah, into so baking. she was a pastry yes. chef. Okay, yeah. I remember. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so you guys have a great... She handles baking. Great household. Hey, babe. I need a birthday cake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Maybe you should get into baking. I think I would enjoy baking a little you bit You baked that dessert. Remember the coconut I uh, was, s'mores thing? There was, a, there was a, year, a year of my life where I was vegan and super, super crazy about what I was eating. Yeah. And... I made a vegan s'mores cake, and it was very good. Yeah. But that's the one only time. It was a little heavy on the coconut oil, but... Yeah. That's all right. Oh, this looks so good. Okay. So, we're going to get this popped in the oven. I also think, two people, when they do chicken parm, they, like, load it up with a ton of mozzarella, and it's like, you don't it's need perfect. that much. Yeah. Like, that's perfect. You don't want to just taste cheese. As good as cheese is, like... You don't want it swimming in cheese. Right. Top it off with a little more parm. A little bit more parm. Mm. And then while this goes in the oven, we will get the gnocchi out of the freezer, get those cooking, get them tossed in some sauce, and then uh, we'll give it a try. And roughly, what are we going to do? We'll pop them in there maybe five minutes at 400 or? Probably about five minutes. If We, ha- we might have to turn on the broiler just okay. for a second Got just it. to yep. get it nice and GBD. But, uh, and it's crazy watching this as someone who like generally does not like cooking because I... 
I'm very impatient and don't. But I was like, that didn't take long at all for you to. Well, just imagine do that. too. He's doing all the other things. If you just had time to just do that, probably yeah. what ten minutes you could have that. Prep. It's fast. It's really I, that's fast. That's what I'm saying. Ugh, maybe I should. I try need to start it. meal prepping. Yeah. Just make this on Mondays. Well, and too, like as long as you like you like mise en place, right? Yes. Like having everything like ready to go, like having your butter diced yep. or your basil pig, yep. like everything yeah. just the so that way. The pepper's julieted. Right, because like in a restaurant, that's how it is. Like you just grab things, put it together, and it's up. Like, so. Have you seen the Nara Smith on TikTok? She makes everything from I scratch. Have, I have. You should, you should do a little People play People always, always like comment to me. They'll like do a collab with mm-hmm. her. I, her stuff is really good. Yeah. She's I mean, really she good. made toothpaste from scratch. She's wow. made gums from scratch. Yeah, she made she, cough, cough drops. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Okay, gnocchi. We'll cook them all. We'll cook your guys's too. That's what's cool too is like you can keep them in the freezer and have them ready to go. Like, yeah. so what's that do? Just toughens them up to hit the boiling water. It just or? makes them easier. You can cook them straight from, like after making them. But I just I think, a lot of pastas honestly I think cook better from frozen. Now, but, would you say a pierogi is a pasta? No. I mean, I wouldn't say a gnocchi is a pasta. Oh, no. <laughs> I consider them... Why didn't you tell me? We could have said no. I mean, no. Well, you asked me pasta dishes, and you said gnocchi. But that's the only one I know. I don't know any other. No, because I, I think a lot of people do consider gnocchi pasta. Do you remember our game of playing Name That Pasta? Oh, jeez. I, I remember. I'm I know sure angel that. hair. I should have said angel hair. I would have said you are no longer welcome as a guest. <laughs> angel hair. <laughs> Is that not a pasta either? Oh, it is, but it's my least favorite. Yeah. Really? Why? Because it's so thin? Yeah, I just think it's, um, I think it is the worst pasta shape to ever be. <laughs> I love angel It's hair. really bad. It's like, it's too thin. It turns to mush really fast. Yeah. And yeah. because of the shape of it, how thin it is, no sauce can ever really like properly Balls combine yeah. with it, you know? You know, you would be mortified growing up. Small town, Wintersville, Steubenville, Ohio. Yeah. There's a restaurant called The Ville, and that's like the only restaurant we'd have, like we had to go to, other than like Bob Evans. Okay. Um, and Roberto Evans. <laughs> my go-to meal growing up, everyone knew the second I walked in what to order, what to, like my order was. Yeah. It was angel hair with oil and garlic, and then I would put French dressing. Oh, oh no. Right. This was going somewhat decently. <laughs> Mix it together. Wow. And I would do angel hair with cold French dressing. Cold French dressing, oil, garlic, and crush it with mashed potatoes. I, oh, I am truly speechless right now. <laughs> I've never heard of anything like this. You before. should try it. It's pretty good. I can confidently say I don't think I will ever try that. <laughs> Most things I will try once. That is going to be a tough one. Just it's like a like a a wine sauce. I don't think know. Of that just sounds like a stomach ache. Oh, yeah, so that good. Does, that doesn't sound great. So good. Okay, let me check on the chicken. Oh, yeah. We're going to bump this up a little bit. Throw our own broil. So these will only didn't take like maybe a minute or two to cook. Once they start floating, they're good to go. Yep. Once they float, they're good. We'll get them in the sauce, get them finished up. We'll plate this bad boy up. Now, do you dump the sauce or do you dump the, the noodle in the sauce? Pasta into the sauce. See? You dump the sauce on the pasta. Really? On the noodle, which... I dump the sauce on the pasta. Yeah. So you, so you would, like, plate op- this up and then pour the sauce on top no, of it? No, he would dump the sauce in that big thing. He With the drain, water? He drain, <laughs> well, no, no, I drain... <laughs> <laughs> no, I drain everything. He drains, and drains then it. That's dump, fine. Yeah, then dump That's that fine. and then in a big, you know... That's fine. Especially if I'm making like a bolognese. Yeah. Well, you don't even know what a bolognese is. It's the meat sauce. That works. Yeah. <laughs> it is. We'll but accept I, that. I cook up bison now, and how, I mix it in and throw it in with the noodles. How yeah. do you feel about, is it Rayo? Ray, Rayo's, Rayo's the brand? Yes. It's fine. It's That's good. our go-to it's that good. we get. I like they have a bolognese sauce now. Yeah. It's pretty good. It's a good jar. Like, like What's a couple... your go-to if we were to go to like Giant Eagle Whole Foods or somewhere to be like get a pasta sauce, what would you recommend? Rayo's is good. Um, I am. This sounds biased because I just like I'm a big fan of them. But Truff, yep, their hot we sauce, is, their, stuff, their yeah. pasta sauce is really yep. good. They've got like an ar- arabiata. Oh, we did, and it, it had a kick. It had a kick. To they it. had yes. like uh, spices too, or something. We, we had like a package. For we them. had a hot yeah, sauce. They, okay. They've got hot sauce. They've got truffle salt now. Truffle oil. Okay, we'll have to try that. Yeah, their stuff is really good. Right now, we're manifesting a sponsorship from Truff. 
Yeah, there we Truff, go. You're they will doing be, it. They will be on here. Have you been? You've been sent some stuff from them. So yeah, so I did a lot of work for them for about three years. Okay. Actually, they uh, the two co-founders, Nick and Nick. Yeah. They when we did the Mr. Beast collab, they donated like a whole pallet of pasta wow. sauce, and then they both flew down themselves to like help with the whole oh, project. That's amazing. Which is crazy. Like, they're really, yeah. really good guys. Yeah, you need a uh, you need to be. Peter's pasta with them. podcast brought to you by Truff. Brought to you by. Or Truff. how about Peter's pasta x Truff? Like you have your own. I own think flavor. I think it could happen. Why it's not? gonna happen. It will happen. Okay, 550 start. All right, we're going to boil those up. Now, is that like a, a goal for you to have like your own I pasta so. or like egg, olive oil, like something? A whole use? line, really. A whole cookware line, I see it. Yeah, we need it. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff I feel like we could yeah. do that it's only really a matter of time. It's just like, that's the big thing is time. Like, it's yeah. really hard to like allocate yeah. Oh, yeah. time for everything. And it's coming. A little bit of salt. What kind of salt do you guys use at home? Oh, Redmond. Is that like, is oh, it like actually, a kosher salt? Just, uh, is it a pea, it's, sea salt? Or, sea salt? It's a sea salt. Now, so not, not iodized. Mm, oh. now, <laughs> All right. now, I do know this salt is some of the oldest salt found. It's Jurassic salt. Okay. So like dinosaurs were eating it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it's from dinosaur... How do they get that? How do we get it? Yeah, yeah, get it. Get it's it. deep in a cave. We got to look into this. Uh, today's episode brought to you by Redmond Salt. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's great. It's like this really, there's something Jurassic about it. What's the name? Redmond. Redmond. It, it's the blue one in the blue bag that you get? Blue bag, red. Isn't it pink salt? Pink sea salt? No, that's oh. not pink Himalayan. Oh. Um, it's a sea salt. Oh, look at that. Jurassic that so area, era. I think they should have called it Jurassic salt. Yeah, they should have. I think you're just making that up. Marketing. No. That's a, it's they on the back the of their bag. I read all into it. Okay. A little bit of lemon in here. Mm. Interesting. That's like one thing that like I still carry with me from like restaurant cooking is like lemon or acid in almost everything. Yep. Like it really yeah. just I makes things level. go crazy. Oh, it looks so good. Oh yeah, guys. This is almost done. Yay. So what else? So what else is, what's next for you guys? Is it just... Um, so we actually, uh, we just signed on. We have new management now. Cool. We've got an awesome agent team. So I think it's now expanding both of our brands and then trying yeah. to encompass it in. So, you know, with Abby, sky's the limit, whatever she wants to kind of get into and get involved yeah. with. And I think it's building on that, finding out what that is. Yep. And I think that's kind of next step for us is just like building our own brand. Yeah. Uh, what do you no, think? just trying to, you know, like I said, love creating, making TikToks, but how can we get outside of that and yeah like Josh said continue growing I mean, and as you see it's just a fast world of social media so we have to look to expand upon that to stay afloat right, stay course. relevant um, you know we both she's like the hardest working person like ever it may yeah. not <laughs> look like it from behind the scenes but she like literally it's I insane. just love creating yeah. videos like I yeah. mean I love creating content yeah. making content. it's just crazy I think for like every creator that is doing stuff nowadays how fast like 15 million like that's yeah, it's in insane. a four it, year period it's crazy is insane. it's insane like it really is yeah. crazy yeah. and, and the fact friends. that you're still relevant now like yeah yes. yeah which is kind of like because I, I go back and forth because it's I know it's not gonna last forever yeah. but like how can I stay true to myself still keep my the core people that love following us and love our family and love me and Josh and um, like I said, we're, I think we, we called it the other day. It's like, we're in our Josh and Abby era now. I feel like for the past few years, we were just like mom and dad. Right. Now we're Josh and Abby trying to find out Josh is so talented with home design and building and, um, you know, uh, my goal, I would love for Josh to have like a show on HDTV or, you know, how can I incorporate my modeling background with my social media now? Yeah. Um, yeah. And like I said, I will continue doing this till no one watches. Like, I genuinely enjoy it and love it. And um, Well, the thing, too, we always got, like, especially from, like, family or friends, they're like, oh, how long is this job going to last? And, like, what I always tell people, I've worked numerous jobs, auto body, uh, car sales, yep. uh, deliver furniture, deliver beer, like, everything. This is the longest job I've ever ha had yep. and best job. So yep. it's right. like a lot of people don't understand. They don't see like what goes on behind the scenes and right. I truly we love what we do yeah. it's so fun we get to just put our passions um, of creating and making fun content yeah. we get to make that as a job right. it's just unbelievable and like I said it's the longest job I've ever had right. yeah. so. and I think just trying to you know as our 
kids are growing. We have toddlers now. Right. And like being toddler parents is very different than being ba- like yeah. newborn parents. Right. And um, and you're thinking about them too now. It's like, of okay, like how can I, you know, extend this income so now I have a family to take care of and, you know, how can we build this this net worth to help our family? And you're thinking about it differently now than when you started way, four yes. years ago. It's yes. like, all right, this is now a business. Yes. Like how do we yes. make this so it yes. goes beyond just the last four yeah. years, but 40 years, exactly. right? Okay. So we'll get this plated up. Oh my God. If it's not good, you can. <laughs> no, it looks like it's going to be really, really good. Could you imagine to take a bite and just spit, and just spit it out? Please yeah. don't do that. <laughs> this is something I'll make a lot because okay, it's like cool. probably my favorite thing yeah. to eat. You know. So when you said that, I was like, yes. yes. <laughs> but you're just like the, the gnocchi was not the. It was a curveball, but it was a good curveball. <laughs> oh, this looks so good. Um, besides the chicken parm, what is your favorite dish to make? Like, if you had to make one dish for the rest of your life. Like pasta dish? Anything. Any dish. I would do probably, like, bolognese sauce with, like, tagliatelle pasta. So, like, uh, it's kind of like fettuccine, yeah. right? Um, I just think it's, like, I could literally eat it every single day. And you've probably mastered it by now. I've mastered my version of it. I was going to okay. say, what well, do you yeah. like? You know, because, like... In Italy, like it's not done the exact same way, but it's like, whatever, I do it my way. So what are your uh, like next steps and big things you... Honestly, this is a big, big piece of it, is okay. this podcast. Yeah. Um, Where you zip on the olive oil. <laughs> uh, but the podcast, just content in general, and then very similar to you guys, but just like seeing how I can keep... Like how you can expand pushing the, the brand following. And, yeah, like with doing is it, is it a collab with a brand is it your own product that's like where we are we're like i love kids clothing and i have a collab right now with a brand called young days yep. with kids clothing but like how can i expand on that is that more collabs or is that my own right um which i think it's really exciting too All right. oh wait i took your fork sorry chicken parm Yum. and yonki as requested chef give it a try let me know right. how you're scooting in here what, what are you it's going to be really should, hot. So what do you Especially think? the chicken. <laughs> I was going to say, gonna should I do... I like, I burnt my mouth. When I took a piece of <laughs> should I do a separate piece of both? Or do you I would, recommend I would both? definitely taste them separate first. For separate sure. first. Okay. <laughs> what are you going for first? Should we do chicken first? I'll Let the chicken to... breathe a little so I don't burn my tongue. Yeah, okay. you can see it, Steven. It's, it's ripping. 10 out of 10 with the smell so far. It smells 10 out of 10. That's Oof. good. Presentation? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's yeah, kind of town. Gorgeous. Gorgeous line. Uh, what I noticed right. is the ring around the plate. You got to leave some room. Yep. Keep Spons. it nice. Keep it clean. Yeah. Josh yes, does not know portion control. So this is beautiful. Okay, Josh good. would have a pound. Like, I just pop. It would be stacked yeah. up. My plating the, is yeah. pretty, you know. That's all right. That's home cooking, though, you know. Okay. Going in there. It's, it's steamy. It's really hot. <laughs> it just came right out of the oven. <laughs> I can see the steam from your, <laughs> your mouth. That's the reaction. I'm gonna do the pasta. For. I'm gonna do that. You so, ever seen Ratatouille? Of course. You remind me at the very was end of the, the movie when yeah. the critic. Yep, that was it. I just gotta shake your hand after All this. All right, phenomenal. It, That's a ten. Out. This yeah. is the best. Nokey? I get Nokey. chicken parm Nokey. before. Nokey. Best I've ever had. Hey, I'm doing the. Nokey. Sorry, I'm like amped right now. This you is are. delicious. You, you ever heard the wow. pasta joke about the gnocchi? No. Oh my god. Why did the Italian chef not get into his house because he had gnocchi? So That's a Josh joke right there. That's perfect. I'm gonna, I got, I'm gonna catalog. It's a salad, salad dad joke for sure. Oh my god, it's so good. Chef, this is incredible. Is it good? All right, I'm doing the chicken. I get this everywhere I possibly can. Yeah. And this is honestly the best I've ever had. I'm yeah. not just saying that. This you can, is the you best. can lie to me. No. no I'm not <laughs> Most of the times, the chicken's really chewy. Yeah. It, it, it's not cooked right. This is perfect. The flavors are all. That's the thing I think with balance. like. Balance. Oh my. There's a synergy. Honestly, any meat in general, especially chicken though, but like when you do, if you would like really like rip that in the pan at high heat, it tenses up. It gets very like tough and everything versus like a nice, very. Tender. This is like, I want to cry. So <laughs> I'm not even kidding. This Josh, is don't have so tissues. good. <laughs> Josh can tell you, I'm not a big fan of chicken. Like, yeah. like this, I'm. It's I would like prefer. Geez. A Chick Fil A yeah. nugget over, yeah, like, because yeah. I'm so man. All right, no, no, throw no, in the no, towel. No, because that's how I am. Because I'm so yeah. weird about chicken. Right. But this is like, good. I could eat this every day. Good, I'm glad. I could eat this, this every just... single day. Cool. It's wow. So good. I'll mm. be the real judge. Wow. I can taste the lemon. 
But it's perfect. As soon as it hits the back of your palate, the flavors just, they spread. Yeah. I'm tasting everything. Mm-hmm. It's just. You taste the lemon, you said? Yeah. yeah, I love it. I taste that on the back of my palate, and it's it's, it's like a dance back mm. there. They're just dancing. On the it's a little dance. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's perfect. Like, truly. Mm. Wow. I need the recipe immediately so I can give it to Josh <laughs> for him to go get. I'm just in awe. I really am. Good. I'm and glad. And he, because he literally... The other night, wanted to make chicken parm, but he couldn't. He was like, "I don't have anything. I don't well, know how to do it." Well, now there's no excuse. <laughs> Did I manifest this meal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is it's incredible. so good. Wow. Well, cool. So, can we sit here and eat the whole thing? Yeah, you okay. guys enjoy that, <laughs> of course. Please. Thank you guys again for coming on. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you. Really appreciate it. Uh, like I said, the recipe is down in the description. Make sure you guys check it out. Make sure you subscribe because the next guest is going to be a really good one. You don't want to miss that. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Go make some chicken parm. <laughs>